Welcome everyone to Unexpressed Day One. Let's go for one. So I started writing this script midway through 2019, went through a fair few changes, and eventually midway through 2022, I felt like it was finally time to tackle this script. This film is about grief. Uh, it's also about the expectations around grief and, and grieving. It follows our main protagonist, Scott, trying to write a eulogy for his brother, Luke. Scott never really felt like he knew his brother. He was always much more of an antagonist than a real person in his life. So the real challenge is to write something meaningful and something real for this funeral. He doesn't feel the way that he feels like he should, or at least the way that other people around him do. So most of the film is him trying to gauge, well, where do I sit in all that? I went through a similar experience with the death of my brother, and it was really a way for me to try and figure out, well, what should I feel? How should I feel? And really just trying to get that onto paper and I think through that trying to learn more about the process from an outside perspective. Hey, hey. Hey. Hi Jack, how are you today? I'm well, how are you Kelvin? Good, thank you. Here's a um, temporary piece of artwork <laughs> and a blue dot. <laughs> so we decided to do a test shoot. This was for a few reasons, so that we could show our backers what to expect for the film that they were going to fund. And we were also trying out a few design elements as well to see if they would read on camera. It's Sunday, the 18th of September, and we are filming uh, a test shoot for Unexpressed. I've got all of my lovely crew here today. It's been great to have everyone actually here um, and all the different puzzle pieces coming together finally. And we're just playing with stuff today and seeing what works. How did you do? Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> You're classic actor. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm okay. I'm good. It doesn't matter how Jack feels. <laughs> yeah. It's just weird being on set with YouTube. I've been on set with YouTube multiple times, but I'm normally that. I'm that. Well, yeah, That's true, that. actually. <laughs> I know Tom Atkinson because we grew up together. We went to, to kinder together, we went to primary school and high school together. I've known him all my life. The main thing I needed to communicate with Scott to the audience is that there's a lot going on inside of his mind. There's a real inner conflict happening and I needed to try and find a way to externalise that. And Tom Atkinson is one of those people. You can tell there's a lot going on inside his head and he's a very intelligent person, a very thoughtful person. That really overlapped with the, the character that I wanted. It's fine. Cut there. Happy. Perfect. Happy? Yeah, happy. No, because if I get up there and say nothing, they just... I really don't think... Anything. Everyone's going to get up there and tell some sweet story about him. It's not really an easy role to ask of someone to really be very vulnerable. So, you know, I was really scared, but he was also really scared too, but that's why we wanted to do it together, because we were both scared and we both went, well, it's you and me, buddy. We're in it together. Hilton, why are you holding Hi. a boom palm? Um, I'm the prod design boom op sound recordist AC today. It's a pretty common role on your um on your smaller budget films. He's right. <laughs> He's right, you know. Not helping. Yeah, you can all shake hands. You can all shake hands. Yeah. Cut more. Yeah. I'm trying to zoom as if I keep moving. Yeah. You got anywhere with me? Not really. Because if I don't say anything, it just. It'll just look weird. My original vision for the look of the film visually is that I wanted it to feel very sparse. And when we did this test shoot, what was aiming to be sparse and liminal and communicating a very empty state of mind from the character ended up just looking like a lack of <laughs> effort in the production design department. And so I instead went the complete other direction with my production designer, Chelsea. And instead of being liminal and empty, we, we, we needed to just fill the whole thing out instead.
joint to my elbow. Yeah. This doesn't need yeah. to be Yeah. Nah, Naruto. Yeah. You can. Oh. Yep. Good. I mean, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, what are we, what are we, test you, what, um, what, what are your thoughts on how that went with the set design being so minimal mm. and everything being so, yeah, right on it, it just kind of, it's not that it didn't feel like there was a character there, mm. it just felt, I don't know, especially when the direction was, like it's, you're nowhere, you're not there at the moment, like, oh, it just looks like dude staring up in a blank space, in a blank room. Mm. The minimal like sort of thing that we were going for, like mm. it just didn't translate. Mm. So we know that now on the actual shoot, we want to fill out that space a lot more. Be good to do a, a read through. Even when we were little, he was, he was just cruel. I don't know why. I suppose I might not get to know why. Whew. Brilliant. That's crazy, that's so much more intense. Yeah, how so? Yeah, just the jumping between stuff. Mm. Um, the banging on the door thing. I think the banging on the door thing really sells the liminal internal stuff. Yeah. I just think that mm. like, in the way that it jumps around a lot more here, mm. it feels much less about Scott, the character, and much more about the emotional process, is what I'm picking up in this script as well, where it's yeah. less about, look at this dude, be sad. And now it's like, damn, isn't it weird how sad people can be? Yeah, um, yeah, and I think that's exactly what we're trying to get at. And the reality is that this process could probably be being printed onto a lot of different people. So mm. yeah, you're right. It's not about Scott's struggle. Mm. Scott is just a a vessel. Yeah, he's to, the guy it's happening to. Yeah, I wrote it in, but by no means, you know, we have to. I just thought that it would probably take the same into a more dramatic realm. Scene four, where you throw the woolen jumper mm. off and you're left shirtless. You were describing quite well, just about like... Well, I, you know, the brother is, has such a hold on him and he feels so, you know, underperformed. Mm. If he does fuck you and he strips it off and throws it at him, mm. A, it's kind of being humiliated, having to strip in front of someone, mm. and slam the door. But I thought instead of going to the door and doing all that, if he's just standing there in his room, in the light, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Just fair. hold it there. Yeah, cool. No, definitely. Let's do it. Cool. So having wrapped up our test shoot, rehearsals and pre-production, we were now ready to finally get into production. Scene two, shot one, take one. 20 years of cumulative history leading us both to this moment. That's how he's a part of this film. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a traitor. <laughs>